Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Mega Voice Live. This is our artist spotlight, and I am just pleased to have joined me on this uh, phenomenal recording artist. Uh, her album is called I Got You. Uh, her first single is called The Kingdom. And uh, please, everybody, welcome Ruth LaEntre. Uh, welcome. Hey. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a phenomenal experience having you on here. And uh, I've listened to your album from the first song to the last song. Um, I tell you, one of my first my favorite songs is Salt. Hey, we got to start it. I like that one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, there was one year where my theme of the year was Salt Life. Oh, wow. So, you know, that song definitely uh, meant a lot right there. So, thank you. To God be the glory. Yeah. <laughs> so, how's everything going? You have been um, touring, you've been singing, but now, you know, let, we'll talk about your project in a minute. But now that you're home, you're home with the kids, are you homeschooling too? Listen, I'm trying the best I can. My kids are, uh, Kobe is three and Promise is one. So um, they're learning like their colors. Kobe knows his numbers one through 20. He knows all of his colors. He's learning words. He knows his name. Um, he knows his birthday. He knows how old he is. Promise is she's learning. She's picking up words from her brother. And he actually knows um, Japanese. He's learning different languages. I'm not teaching it the different languages, but he watches Word Party. They watch uh, Motown Magic where they have all of the blippy on YouTube. Kids are in love with YouTube. Yeah. So that's that's my life at home. I am literally on my feet all day keeping up with Kobe and Promise each and every step of the way. If I'm not cleaning up, I'm either cooking or bathing them, getting them prepared for their nap time, which they don't like taking. Well, Promise does. Kobe doesn't. And so my life is a 24 seven mom on top of that you know trying to create new uh, material bring out new music and stuff like that so yeah my life is busy every yeah. day <laughs> so do you find like this time you know you're not necessarily at a physical church but uh now this time you can be creative with your writing definitely so how i do that is um i have the kids on a schedule so they go to sleep they're in the bed at nine o'clock no later than nine o'clock and so they're usually sleep by like nine fifteen or something like that if they're not like really tired they go to bed at 8 30 but um after i put the kids in the bed i used to get in the bed but i found myself not being creative as i normally or usually were before i had children and so i had to sacrifice my time and realize if I wanted to get it done, if I wanted to um, make new music and create new material, then I had to take time out for myself. So when I put the kids to bed, that's usually my time to myself where I'm spending time with myself and I'm having time to go upstairs and just write and listen to music. I'm the type of writer where I cannot have a beat and write. Like I have to already have came up with the beat in my head and the hook and then I put it down that way and then I, you know, send it to my brother and my sister um, who will help me create a song or something like that. So that's how I spend my time alone, wow. <laughs> like at three, four, five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how are you uh, still engaged with your church? So, yeah, I'm really still involved with my church. I'm the worship leader at uh, my grandma's, my pastor, Evangelist Lydia Jones, and my dad is my co-pastor, Bishop Arventure Jones Jr. And so I'm the worship leader there. And um, we've... Last Sunday, we had a service, but, you know, they set down the stay at home rules for this week. So we're trying to come up with a way to still have service, but at the same time, abide by the laws of the land. So oh, yeah. um, definitely, we're definitely st still trying to keep that really active as much as we can. Mm. So uh, are you now singing live to the camera like this? Are you singing live for your church? I mean, I know everybody can't sing <laughs> together. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just makes it very difficult to do a hymnal where everybody just singing on Zoom or or Skype together. You know. Right. So I mean, are you doing like a solo act uh, uh, on this? 
<laughs> not yet, not yet, not at church, not yet. But I did do a, um, I did a kind. It was like a we just want to sing. That was the caption of it, and it was me and my sister and um, Tim Newton Jr., an amazing vocalist from uh, my area. And my sister, she's an amazing vocalist too. So we did that, and I haven't set it up with the church yet, but I think we're gonna have to do that this Sunday. So we'll okay. see. <laughs> and your church is based out of where? Aberdeen, North Carolina. Okay. Come as you are, Evangelistic Center. North Carolina. How's the weather? Yeah, out it is actually in the middle of summertime, in the middle of winter time, and in the middle of springtime. <laughs> we don't know what we want to be. <laughs> <laughs> not, not consistent at all. I, I get not it. consistent at all. One day you can go outside with sandals on. Next day you have to wear a trench coat, and the other day you have to wear a fur coat. So we're we're kind of mixed up here oh, I hear you. I <laughs> and the pollen is crazy mm. like the pollen is if corona not taking me out the pollen is trying to take me out of I here i'm you. telling you i'll be having to pray before i go outside like lord please just let my life get together because <laughs> this pollen is crucial it's so bad it's really bad yeah it's yeah, really bad take a lot of um I, you know what i've learned especially in allergy season when i know it's coming Mm -hmm. start start taking some stuff before it hits yeah yeah you know, you yep. know, that way i just try to get above the curve real quick yeah i want to talk about yep. your album i got you again i told mm -hmm. you my favorite song was salt but tell me uh what inspired this album the kingdom is definitely a slamming single i mean thank you there's just something an uh, energy to when i hear the kingdom i'm just just ready to dance you know and i can't <laughs> dance but i'm ready to dance <laughs> When I hear it, I can't dance, you know, I got my two step, but, you know, hey, but I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get to it when the kingdom comes on. And that's all you need is your two step. We are kingdom. We are kingdom. That's, that's right. all that's you it. need. That's it. I, just, I know how to clap my hands. I know how to move, sway back and forth with the choir. You know, that, right. that's about it. That's about it. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all you need. So this album, um, we released it in 2017. Anthony Brown and Justin Savage produced the whole entire album. My label mates, my brothers, they did a phenomenal job. I love every song um, Anthony created. And it's just like he brought out something in me that um, I knew I had, but I wouldn't, I wasn't releasing it like I should have been. Yeah. And so on this album, you get real raw vocals from me no matter how high or how hard they were to bring out you got it and anthony and justin they definitely um pushed me into another level with this i got you album and kingdom like you said that's that's our song we got kingdom um that was an amazing first single to put out and it it showed the world that it doesn't matter who you are what you do um how rich you are this is the kingdom of God, and we have the power and the authority to speak those things that be not as though they were. And so if we use the power that God has given us and realize that we were born to shine, that we were born to win, and that God graced us to win, we already have what we need. And so I love that song, too. Awesome. It's real dope. Awesome. Did you write <laughs> any of the songs on the project? Anthony asked me, he said, how do you want this? What do you want people to hear? And I gave, I sent him a few songs that uh, I had wrote maybe a few years back. And surprisingly, he did exactly what I wanted him to do. He took what I sent and created this sound for me. So it was dope. Love it. Love it. So yeah. I, I told you my favorite song. What's your favorite song to perform off the album? Oh, my goodness. I would say now that my favorite song is in my name to sing. Like the groove. Ah, it takes me out every time. Yes. When it goes to there is time, I'll be like, yeah, if y'all don't jam, I'm jamming by myself. <laughs> like, I love in my name. So that right now, that's my favorite song. And, to, and that's you know, the single sing. that's uh, released right now? In yeah, this is single that's out right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, um, what is what, what artists inspired you as you're growing up? You know, that pretty much had to do with this album as well? I would say my um, 
it's one part in 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 my name, and I'll be like, um, oh, I'm done dying of you. That reminds me so much of my cousin slash guy sister, Shante Hill, an amazing, amazing, amazing vocalist who I used to sing with growing up. Uh, we used to sing The Safest Place by Karen and um, Kiara Sheard. And so that was our song when I was a little girl. We sung it all over the place. Wow. We sung it every Sunday. Mm-hmm. They were like, we want to hear Tay and Ani. What? That's my nickname, Ani, for my family. We want to hear Tay and Ani sing The Safest Place. So I would have to say that's my number one. Um, of course, my mom, she sings. That's who I got it from. My dad sings too. Um, my whole family sings. My sister, my brother, my grandmother. Um, but I would have to say Shantae. And we grew up listening to Kimberell and the Clark Sisters, and Nessa Bell Armstrong, Aretha Franklin, Dietrich Haddon is one of my favorites. Um, it's so it's a lot. It's a lot of the goats that I that I still to this day look up to and be like, y'all really paved the way for us. So, so which all right? So there was a time like Walter Hawkins was my favorite growing up. Really? Yeah, and um, there was a time I was uh, visiting Oakland, um, a very nice place and scary at the same time. But anyway, I was <laughs> visiting Oakland, um, and uh, I happened to go by. My aunt told me go by, you know, the church, the Hawkins Church. It's right down the mm-hmm. block. I say, cool, then go there. And then I walked in, and um, I met. Um, Rusty Watson. I met Rusty Watson. Yeah. And he introduced me to Edwin Hawkins because I just wanted to see the church of the icon that I grew up uh, listening to. Right. And I was able to meet Edwin Hawkins. So that was just as great. And I got to meet him another time before he passed away. But they were doing mm-hmm. um, they were doing a uh, community choir. So anybody that wanted to learn how to sing in the community, they can come to their church and learn under Edwin Hawkins. That was a phenomenal thing. So it was just like that was wow. my moment with an artist uh what what was yours who was yours what was my all moment um when i was the very i think the very first i don't met so many people and now that you know I, i'm in the industry yeah i mean but you know it's, the first time you know the, the first, first time you like wow it was i'm trying to remember who it was i think it was helen baylor I had to open up for her when I was maybe, I think I was seven years old. And um, I sung Mary Mary, take the shackles off my feet. And I had this little dance routine and everything. And that was, she was, um, she looked at me and she said, you are such an amazing little girl. And you know, Helen Baylor, she was the job back in the day, and she still is. Like, she paved the way, too. And so I think that was the very first artist that I met. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm opening up for a famous person. <laughs> and so I had to say her. I think that was the first person I, I, I met that gave me, like, that all moment as a little child. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, man, those, those are great opportunities. Uh, yeah. when, when did you start singing, though? I've been singing since I was two. I, like, I've literally been singing all of my life. <laughs> I'm 28 now. I keep telling people I'm 27, but I did a calculation of that. I'm 28. <laughs> my mom tried to tell me I was 20. I was like, no, I'm 27. But she was right. <laughs> yes. She was right. A lot of us miscalculate a few years, you know, <laughs> give or take. <laughs> I'm usually the one that keep up with my age and tell everybody how old they are. But I don't forgot, honey. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, now you know going out and performing sometimes you you might leave your songs your your catalog what is like your favorite song to go to like you know maybe it's a hymn or some other song that you know from somebody else that's just your go-to you get into it maybe at a concert maybe at church what what is that song um, I usually would go to He's Able or Tis So Sweet. That's on my album. Tis So Sweet is on my album, too. He's Able is and always will be the song. <laughs> like, that's everybody's go-to song, I believe. No matter where you go, who church you go to, how many members the church have, you're, the band is going to know He's Able the deacon is going to know he's able. The mother's going to know he's able. The whole congregation is going to know he's able. So that's usually the go to song for me. Everybody be like, oh, what y'all going to say? 
So yeah, I'll have to say he's able. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there's just times where you're in the spirit and you know, all right, I'm going to go off the grid for a little bit. Yeah. I'm just going to have a good time here. Uh, I just want to take a, a pause and give a shout out to Ty Scott Records. Uh, yes. For, for making this happen. And my boy, uh, Bill Carpenter, definitely give a shout out. Thank I you so him. much for making this work. Yeah, that's that's yes. my brother right there. <laughs> yeah, so to so Ty Scott. Uh, hey, Bill. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I hope he's watching. I just got off the phone with him, so uh, yes. I hope he's watching. And, and, and I know my dad is watching. Hey, Daddy, hey, are dad. that true? <laughs> that's right. Listen, he made sure he got all the information right. We got she's going every online. time. When? Where? How? Okay. Right. Where the link? Send me the link. That's right. <laughs> that dad must be your biggest fan. He is. He's also right. my manager. My dad, he was in the industry for over 30 years, so he knows all of this. And um, he's my manager, so I call him daddager. So, yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> and what's the biggest thing you've learned from him in this industry? Relationships, integrity, and protocol are key. They are the keys to your success. So... And stay focused. And he always say, you always, he's always going to say, put God first. And that's always um, a thing that can never get old to hear. Yeah. You so, Sometimes we need to be reminded, like, you putting God first, right? right. <laughs> and he making sure of that. So That's right. Yeah. That's the success to any business, industry, art mm -hmm. industry, whatever it is. It's definitely God first. Right. Um, because sometimes we can get so caught up in other things where we think we're putting God first. And at the same time, God is like, no, y'all over here doing your own thing. Y'all haven't consulted me. Y'all haven't talked to me about any of this. Y'all just making your own moves. And so sometimes yeah. he has to remind us like and it's good that we have people um, in our lives like my dad and my mom and my grandmother, and my pastor, um, who maybe just call you on the phone one day or just say something at church on a Sunday during their message and make, make sure they're drilling in you that you have to put God first. Nothing is going to work without God. It may seem like it's working, but at the end it's going to all crumble. So we just have to make sure God is at the forefront of everything. Man, that's right. Now, you know, many people are in the midst of anxiety right now. Uh, they're fearing to even go outside. You know, we're hearing it's now airborne. Um, you know, before it was, if you touch something or, you know, little droplets, now it's airborne. Um, of course, you know, the, the key rule, stay home. Mm -hmm. Um, and we want people to stay home in church too. Stay home. Mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 the twofold message, stay home. Always mm -hmm. stay home. But, um, what, what do you want to say, uh, to people right now that are feeling a lot of anxiety a lot of fear, uh, a lot of stress right now. What, what's your message to them? So the crazy thing is I had this um, verse that popped up on my phone last night. It came out of nowhere. I was making a voice. You know, the new app that everybody is doing now. And my sister, Andrew, you got to do a voice. -y. You got to do a voice. -y. So I was like, no, I'm not doing a voice. -y. So she was over my house and literally my sister was in the bathroom for five hours doing a voice so I'm, like, I'm gonna do a voice so I did one last night and um the verse that popped up on my phone and when I went back to look at it I couldn't find it so I had to like google where it was and it says Hebrews 10 and 35 so do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord remember the great reward it brings you patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will then you will receive all that he has promised the thing that stood out to me was the patient endurance is what we all need. Like people are going crazy. Their anxiety levels are above the roof. The fear is causing people to lose their minds, causing people to think I'm not going to make it. I might as well just kill myself and my family. Even Trump said people, this is going to be the highest what did he say? Highest rate of suicide that we ever experienced because people don't know it. Like don't say that on <laughs> Don't say it on TV. And so where we're hearing all this negative stuff on news and people on just posting all death, 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 death. They're not posting about who all recovered from the virus. They're, repos they're posting and reposting everyone who has died from the virus. Right. And so I personally know people who have had this 
virus and that have overcome it. And so if we continue to just talk about the negative, of course, we're going to have people that's fearing and people that's stressed out, not knowing what to do. So we have to overthrow those negative thoughts and those negative things that come to our mind with positivity. Even though the coronavirus, yes, it may be taking somebody out, but you have to speak over your life, speak over your family, speak over your children, speak over your health, speak over your job, your finance, your income, income that I shall live and not die. I am well and not sick. You have to, you just have to the enemy tries to play tricks on us, so we have to play them tricks right back on him. Right. So he might come to right. you and say, you're going to die. No, I'm going to live. You're not going to be well. No, I'm going to be well. Like You just have to um, bounce back, and you cannot take your time with bouncing back with the trick of the enemy because if you give him a little space, he'll take the little space that you give. And he'll continue to throw those thoughts, throw those thoughts in your mind, put those thoughts in your heart. And after a while, you'll find yourself being controlled by fear. And my grandmother, my pastor always says, if fear grips you, it will control you. And that's what a lot of people is um is going through right now. They they've allowed fear to grip them, so it's controlling them. You have people out here who are literally fussing. I see a I seen a post on Facebook the other day. This this uh white this Caucasian guy and his friend, they were driving, going to the car somewhere. And he recorded a video of his neighbor coming to the window, like banging on his window. You don't supposed to be like, you're supposed to stay home. <laughs> like he, he had to go get food. He didn't have no food in the house. And so, like I said, uh, we just have to stay positive, be positive. And when those negative things come our way, we have to overthrow them with positivity. And I think if we, that then the world will be better and people their anxiety levels because people cannot get to their um counselors or their therapists right now because of you know the stay-at-home order so what are we to do we need to turn to god is what we need to do yeah yeah turn and live so <laughs> we need some online counseling yeah we, we need yeah. some so that was hebrews 10 35 hebrews sure. 10 and 35 yep mm -hmm. Do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Be confident yeah. and remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what we all need now. We need to be mm. patient Come and on. endure this thing that's going on. So, on. Yeah, that's right. That thing blessed me last night. I said, come on, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, it's amazing because... Uh, a lot of times we let our jobs get in the way. We let our sports mm -hmm. events, we let our, you know, entertainment get in the way. And what God is doing is, yes. saying, Listen, you know, I'm going to shut some things down, allow some things to be shut down because now you don't have anywhere to rush to. So can you mm -hmm. spend some time with me in the morning? Can you spend some exactly. time with me throughout the day? Like, where are you running to so much that I can't get a little time with you? Yeah, and, and I remember growing mm -hmm. up to that song, Lornell Harris, I Miss My Time With You, you know. Wow. And, and uh, you know, it's just a song that says, hey, I, I miss those moments together. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's those moments that God is looking forward to. Uh, how has this increased your, your time with God? It has definitely. Even though I was already spending time with him, I believe that it's increased in, even more because um, now I'm not only praying for myself, which I wasn't doing before. I was praying for everybody, but now it's like a, it's, I can't explain how it is. Like now it's an urge to really, really, really dig deep in prayer, even though we were praying before, but I believe like now I'm in a place where I'm praying when I get up in the morning, yeah. <laughs> praying when I'm washing That's the dishes, right. praying in the shower, praying, oh, man. doing everything I'm Pray and pray and pray it because you never know like who you come in contact with. You can go to the grocery. Oh my God. And let me say this. I went to the grocery store the other day and I don't think, I don't even think the man noticed what he, what he were, was doing. And so I was at the fruit sec. I forgot what section I was in, but all I know he was close to me and all I hear was, <laughs> I looked at him. I said, did you just call? Out in the open like that and not have no nothing over your face, not have your hands over your mouth or anything. He's just coughing out in the open. Mm -mm. And so if we don't cover ourselves in prayer, <laughs> I'm I was like, <laughs> we have Straight to stay up. prayerful for real. And 
And one thing um, I was speaking of on the other day was that if the devil cannot get you while you're awake, he will try to get you in your sleep. The other night I had a dream. It wasn't a dream. It was just like, I don't know what it was, but I felt this like fluid in my lungs and mm. it was, I was asleep. But at the same time, I was up and I was like panting for my breath. I couldn't hardly breathe. I was like, <gasps> and all I kept hearing was, you got Corona, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die. I already knew it was the work of, you know, the enemy. And so I had to just tell myself, like I said, you trying to bring all this negative stuff to me. No, that's not happening. I'm not dying. I don't have Corona. I'm well. I'm 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 not sick. I'm healthy. I'm I'm not going to die from anything. And so um, that's what we have to just keep on doing, because if he can't get you while you Whoa, he'll definitely try to get you in your sleep and bring that fear, but you have to cast down those thoughts immediately. You can't even let them reside in your heart or in your thoughts because if they do, they'll take control over you. So, We, we have some listeners here, and so I'm going to give them an opportunity to text me, whether on Facebook or on YouTube. Yeah. Um, text me any question. Um, but one, one did write me. They said they want you to sing something a cappella. Somebody just said, I love her voice. <laughs> So I didn't, I didn't ask. Somebody <laughs> wrote me and said they want you to sing a cappella. Act like this is church service, and, and we're not all going to join in. We can't do a choir. I don't have those uh, vocal tunes and auto tunes to, to make it work. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um... Now, see, I caught you earlier because you did try to go on He's Able a little bit. And, oh my uh, gosh! <laughs> I see my go-to him. Okay, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> this pilot is in my throat. And if you off. have any other questions, everybody, uh, just <laughs> put it here. Maybe you might have a song suggestion. I don't know. You know. Are they trying to get a live concert? No. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. Tis so sweet. To trust in Jesus, mm. just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, mm. just to know it was said by God, Jesus, oh, 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 Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove you more and more, oh, 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 Jesus, my precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. <laughs> oh, Amy, you're finished? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> My voice is so raspy I, right I now. Think, I think you're going to have to schedule a uh, online concert. <laughs> and you all heard it here on the Mega Voice Live. Uh, we, we're going to need you to do it on And we don't need any instruments. We don't, we don't need a keyboard. We don't need anything. We just need yeah, you. Yeah, I just want Robo. That's it. Raspy and all. I don't care. If that's raspy, <laughs> my lord. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I, I got a lot of... If, if I could, um, you know, put any sound effects, you know, many people would be doing this, this, this right here, you know. They, 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 oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. I, I need an amen track. I need a hallelujah <laughs> track on this thing. For real. Oh, wow. God. Wow. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> wow, wow. We, well, we want to thank you uh, for taking the time to speak to us, speak words of life. You're welcome. Uh, any new projects coming up? 
I am definitely in the process of writing new material. I'm, I don't think I'm going to release a whole album. I'm thinking, leaning more towards an EP right now to just to get something out there. And so the people can have, um, I don't want to take too much longer to release new material. So I'm definitely thinking of either working on a brand new single for y'all mm -hmm. or EP and have the album come a little later. So okay. we're definitely in the process of writing new music. Mm -hmm. I would play the video now, but I usually get flagged when I play, you know, certain videos. So, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so I want everybody to uh, number one. This is on our YouTube channel, McGuire Ent. Uh, okay. We'd love you to subscribe to McGuire Ent on YouTube. You can get more content. Uh, also, we're on Facebook, McGuire Entertainment Group, and uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram. So follow us there. Yes. Uh, but uh, we want to uh, promote your music. You can find her on any digital platform, uh, Ruth LaAntra. And uh, this the album title is called I Got You. Uh, the first single is The Kingdom. However, the single currently out right now is In His Name. Yes, In, name. in My Name. And mm -hmm. In My Name. In My Name. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want you to check that out. Download the music. I actually download the music. And we want you to put it in part of your, your playlist, your inspiration list. Um, there's, uh, what is your social media handle? So everything is at Ruth LaAntra, R-U-T-H-L-A-O-N-T-R-A. And I do have um, the blue check by my name. So if, it's, if you don't see that, then it's not me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Now, how do they book you? They got to go through dad. So um, yeah. <laughs> now, of course, how do we book you for an online concert now? Nowadays, I want to know, how do we schedule this? What do we need to do? Y'all are so crazy. So look, I'm actually, me and my sister and uh, a, a Tim Newton Jr., we, we are actually, my brother too, we are supposed to be doing something next week. My sister is, uh, uh, she's the CEO of Team BGV on Facebook. And so um, she has a fundraiser going on, raising money to help the music community. And she's going to be giving away money at the end of this month to people who, in, who are in need and that are not working right now due to the coronavirus. So uh, we're supposed to be doing a live concert on Facebook. I think it's on April the 9th, next Thursday. So y'all going to see that. And if you want to book me, you can go to 910-988-4614. 910-988-4614. All right. Awesome. Awesome. want to thank you once again. Let's close this out with prayer. We want to pray for those who are on the front lines, whether it's the nurses, the doctors. Um, I saw even at Walmart, there are people still standing up, greeting people as they go in and out. Mm -hmm. like, why are you there? Like, take that roll away, put them somewhere else. It, like, like, put it over the intercom. Let, when they yeah, walk in the door, hello. It, you know, still keep his job, <laughs> but man, you know, there's got to be a way. So there's people, cashiers, there's... Mm -hmm. um, People are cleaning buildings right now, and uh, th there's so much. People in the prison systems, um, mm -hmm. whether it be to the guards, the staff, or the inmates themselves. Uh, would you mind just saying a prayer over uh, those individuals? Yes. Father God, thank you, Jesus, for, first of all, just waking us up this morning and allowing us to still be a part of this earth that you created. And God, we just want to ask you to keep us all covered under your blood and keep every person who is on the front line covered and protected, keep their families protected and give them strength, give them the peace that surpasses all understanding where there's worry, God, replace it, where there's fear, God, replace it with your strength, replace it with your peace, replace it with your joy and just encourage each and every one of their hearts. And to those that who have lost family members due to this virus, God, ask that you just come in their lives right now and wherever 
they are. I ask that you fill their hearts with the peace that only you can give, the joy that only you can give. And God, I thank you and I praise you for what you're doing now and how you're removing everything that the enemy has tried to come up against your people with. I thank you for covering us under your blood. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your guidance. I thank you for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and telling us how to go about doing things in our everyday lives, how to handle this situation that's going on. And I pray for the people again, that who are in the front line and who are just in this uh, world and having to face this thing head on and face it every day at the hospital, uh, the janitors, the nurses, the doctors who are in rooms with people who have this virus and who are afraid. And I, uh, the people that we see on Facebook who are just afraid of uh, the, the virus and and not knowing if they're going to make it back to their families or not knowing what they're going to do next. I got to, again, I just ask you to strengthen them and encourage their hearts and be with us and keep them protected. And God, we thank you for the virus being gone. By faith, we speak that the virus is gone. By faith, we may not be able to see it right now. We may not be able to feel it right now. The world may be going crazy. The world may be in turmoil. But right now, God, we speak it and we claim this thing done that the virus is gone. We're going to wake up. And the, the government is going to say, congratulations that you survived the coronavirus. You survived yes. it, God. And we thank you for that. And we praise you. And we give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praise. And we say you are the greatest power. We say you are the greatest to ever do it. And God, we love you and we bless you and we praise you. And we give your name all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Thank yes, you so Jesus. much. Thank you so much for you are welcome. us and for blessing everyone that's been on this uh, interview here. God bless you in your journey. God bless Thank you, you in your purpose. God bless your father in his ministry and yes. your mother. We just uh, pray blessings over you and your family. And please stay safe. Yes, you too. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure being on one of the best interviews I've done. So thank you. Oh, praise God for that. <laughs> praise God for that. All right. Thank you, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Phil, too. And this is the Mega Voice Live presented by McGuire Entertainment Group. God bless.